Right, okay, um, so yeah, I'm going to talk about the Arts API project, which is a project I was involved in a few years ago now, 2014-2015, like, uh, um, the work from this was published at the Academy, European Academy of Design in 2017, um, and yeah, this is a project, it's kind of interesting, kind of coming after the last uh, talk, and maybe some kind of connections previously, um, thinking about that talk, that talk was really interesting thinking about the future. This is a, t a project that happened in the past and kind of maybe suffered a little bit from some of the things not being in place in the way that they were described as they are now. Um, there were two things really at the heart of this project. One was to kind of really understand the arts organisations that we were working with and be able to kind of um, uh, get a handle on how they work and how their networks work. Uh, and then also a development side of the project, which is about how do we take that kind of process of understanding these networks and try to digitize that and turn it into some kind of automated version, um, which we work with. So it's the Arts APA project, and we worked with Future Everything, Swirl. Uh, I'm from Dr. Johnson College of Art and Design, University of Dundee, and it was funded by Nesta um, Research and Development Fund, which was co-funded by Arts and Humanities Research Council. So why? do this. So the kind of big driver really was to help the arts sector gain insights into their own networks and create new and refined business models that could help unlock new funding opportunities. Helping them make better investment decisions and offer more targeted programs and productive products and services. So kind of engage them and get them kind of more um, they were very interested and excited about using data but they weren't necessarily really kind of geared up for doing so, so we were trying to kind of help that process along as, as well as we could. And I said there's two components to this. So the first part was to use social network analysis as our re research tool. So we went through a whole research uh, social network analysis process, which is very much kind of boots on the ground, asking questions, gathering data, and modeling that data, and building visualizations of that data. And then attempting to learn from that process and turn that into a data collection visualization technology, which would kind of um, a digital version of that which would be more automated and I'll talk about some of the, the things that worked in that and some of the pitfalls that didn't work so well in terms of um, de the development side of the project. So as I said it was the University of Dundee, uh, Innovation Lab for Digital Culture Future Everything, Swirl, we we're a leading semantic data specialist, uh, we use linked data and uh, RDF uh, linked data. Uh, and the five arts organisations we worked with were Future Everything, Forma, Red Eye, Culture 24 and Blast Theory. So they were the ones that kind of went through the process with us. Um, at the outset, it was really interesting. We had a workshop, come on to that, so come on to that. We had a workshop early on with them where they were really excited about kind of thinking about data. Um, and big data, as it is now, is still a, a big thing, getting an even bigger thing. Um, but at the time, it was kind of when it was kind of really starting to get known in the, the arts. Uh, the arts sector was kind of becoming increasingly saw it as a potential way to describe their value in a non-monetary way, but to think about it in an alternative um, dimension. Uh, so, uh, yeah, there's all sorts of different things, kind of different platforms, different content, different kind of new trends and things that they were interested in. We were interested in exploring with them. So big data, as you know, comes from patterns that uh, can be derived by making connections between pieces of data about an individual, about individuals in relation to others, about groups of people, or simply about structure of information itself. Social network analysis is the mapping and measuring of relationships and flows between people, groups and organizations, computers, URLs, and other connected information knowledge entities. The nodes in the networks are people and groups uh, while the links show relationships or flows between those nodes. So as I said, this is kind of a, a, one of the, a shot from the um, original network where we're talking about the process of uh, social network analysis uh, and trying to kind of understand the ideas or the requirements or the kind of wants of the arts organisations in terms of how they imagined how um, big data might be useful for them, how they might utilise the different data sources that they were now starting to track and manage and so on. Uh, so out of that workshop, um, we established that there were kind of six real sort of desired impact measures that we were going to use as part of the project to kind of uh, 
measure how we were kind of moving forward with things. So one of the things that the, the first thing that the arts organisations wanted was to be able to kind of evidence the way in which the organisations create and maintain their networks. So how do they manage their networks? How do they develop them? How do they sustain that kind of that life of, of what they're all about? They were also looking for evidence of the way in which organization, arts organisations grow their networks over time. So not only do they maintain them, they're always looking for ways to develop those networks, to expand them, to look for future opportunities and so on. Um, they were also looking for evidence of the way in which arts organisations encourage and promote knowledge, exchange and creativity within their networks. Evidence of the way in which arts organisations collaborate with their sectors, so they work across different sectors, often social, health, educational, cultural, sometimes finance, various different kinds of areas in which arts organisations are kind of enabled and empowered to work. Not, they're not always just restricted to, to arts uh, organisations and situations. Um, so they're kind of very flexible from that point of view, and they needed a way to, kind of, to show that flexibility. They're also looking, always looking for evidence of the way in which arts organisations have internationalised their networks. So again, how, do they, how are they expanding and growing and how are they connecting beyond their locality? Um, and also ways in which they may uh, support progress in developing countries. Again, how they might expand their kind of international side of things, I guess. So we took those six things and thought about different ways that we could help support that. And generally, this was in terms of thinking about um, visually mapping network nodes and their connections identifying new network nodes over time, thinking about a timeline, for example, how that might kind of operate. Uh, if we could look back over a period of time to see how things have changed. Um, looking at the way different arts organisations are working with particular projects or whether there's different attendance events and things like that. People were interested in measuring that kind of stuff. Um, thinking about different kinds of uh, organisational attributes and things that they might be involved in different uh, activities that they might take part in at different times of the year became an important thing and kind of filtered into something we developed as a kind of keyword searching idea which, which didn't quite get implemented but we kind of developed the, the ideas behind that and yeah, looking at relationships across countries and different locations and so on. So they became the kind of drivers for developing this stuff. Um, so in order to do that we really needed to go through the SNA process and that involved um, going through this process. So we had to identify the roles and responsibilities of the individuals within organisations in order to establish the context of an investigative relationship. And what that really means is speaking to the people in the organisations and getting them to identify the other components of their network. So who are the other nodes in their networks? And with all the arts organisations, we got them to go off and kind of list all of the other people they work with over a 12-month period. And that became our kind of our, the beginning of our map. We also then had to develop and administer a, a questionnaire. So we needed to identify different questions that we wanted to investigate in terms of their kind of creative activities. And there's four questions we'll come on to shortly. Uh, we then needed, to, because of the kind of drivers, we needed to think about how we map and visualize the network connections. Uh, so we can see the relationship between internal connections with the arts organizations and their external stakeholders or partners that they're involved in. So we needed to show that. Uh, we also needed to be able to look at the intra and interrelationships of organisations in order to identify the strengths and weaknesses and using SNA measures as a way of kind of trying to understand things like degree of connectedness, strength of connections, distance between connections and so on and so forth. Uh, and then to use this process, as I said, as a blueprint for the development of kind of prototype software, which would essentially do this process for us based on pulling in different kinds of data sources. Because this, doing this process is a very long, drawn-out process where you have to actually ask questions and gather data. Like I say, kind of boots on the ground stuff. It's not, it didn't exist in terms of actually being automated at the time, so we we're attempting to kind of get to that point. So these were the four questions. We asked a number of different questions, but these, the, these were the four questions that we focused on um, in terms of trying to understand, I guess, arts organizations and their creative activities um, as their kind of working process. So the first question we were asking was, who do you regularly engage with professionally outside of any particular project? For example, in an ongoing strategic activity. So we're interested in thinking about which partners of the ones they've listed do they work with strategically? Okay, so we, then we would map that kind of network in relation to that question. Second question was, who would most likely be in order to brainstorm with and generate ideas? So again, looking at creativity, originality, generating new ideas and, and thinking about uh, how 
the kind of the creative side of, of what the arts organisation uh, organisations are attempting to do. So again, we would build a kind of an SMA informed map of that process. Uh, the third one was to actively collaborate uh, with the delivery of a project or activity. So beyond thinking about creative ideas, who do you actually work with to realise these things? How do you make this stuff happen? Sometimes that's the same people, sometimes it's different people. So these things change over time. We wanted to kind of get an understanding of that. And also then, who do you likely evaluate the value and impacts and benefits of your projects with? Again, sometimes that was there was kind of a, a longer trajectory with some partners and other times people were co-opted into those processes at different times. So we wanted to be able to show how that map would change over time. So that took quite a, lo a long time to do that. Um, so in order to kind of get the most out of the SNA process, we had to consider a number of SNA measures. So the first one was kind of fairly obviously to look at connectivity. So connectivity basically is the measure of the minimum number of nodes which would need to be removed in order to disconnect the graph. Connectivity then provides the insights into the vulnerability of a network should nodes in a network be removed. A highly connected network could generally also have high density score and low levels of vulnerability. So that was kind of, that became an interesting talking point in relation to arts organizations and how they were actually structured. It became useful in terms of uh, reflecting back to them what they were doing and how they were working, how they could potentially change the way they were working to be more robust, really. Um, we then looked at density, so we would measure the sum of the ties within a network divided by the number of possible ties in the network. So highly dense network would be a network where most of the nodes in the network are connected to one another. Density then is the measure that gives some insight into the speed of information handling within the network. So networks with high density can pass information around much more quickly than low density networks. So networks that are really, really closely connected, have multiple connections between the different nodes in that network are going to be much more agile in terms of dealing with different kinds of information flows and so on. Whereas disparate ones, which are kind of kind of broad networks that have very few connections, but are kind of long, thin connections, if you like, rather than thick ones, um, they're much slower and much less adaptable in terms of how they work. We also looked at uh, the out degrees, so the number of uh, outgoing connections from one node to many others. And this tends to show whom within a network is distributing the information, so who's sending stuff out. And these uh, nodes are often described as information sources. So high degree out scores tend to signify people who are sending information to multiple connections, and low out degree scores signify people who send very little information within those networks. We also then looked at in degrees, which is a measure of the opposite, which is the number of incoming connections from the network to an individual node. It tends to show whom within a network is receiving information from other nodes. Uh, these nodes may be described as information seekers. High de in degree scores tend to signify people who are receiving information from multiple connections, and low in degree scores tend to signify people who receive very little information from few connections. So the, the flip side of uh, out degrees. And then degree centrality is another measure which establishes which nodes are central to the network in terms of control over the information flow. So how are these networks structured? Who are the real kind of like information managers? Uh, generally, the measure of the most is most useful and it provides a visualization of the central and peripheral players within a network. Uh, the numerical measure is useful for comparing uh, across different networks. So when we were looking at um, the makeup of the different arts organizations, it, become use it became useful to think about degree centrality. It's particularly in relation to some other measures, which I'm not going to talk about here, but we looked at um, clique participation index as well, which was quite revealing in terms of how the different uh, arts organizations were structured, which we fed back to them in the reports that came out of the project. Uh, and then the other kind of feature, based on the thing that was being driven um, from the kind of requirements was this idea of clustering. So this was something that we really wanted to build into the Arts API tool, but it's something we, we, we put into the SNA process as well. So we wanted to see if we could cluster things by country, by city, and by sector uh, to give some kind of information about, again, how these different arts organizations were operating and to be able to visually show the value of those, uh, those activities. So going through the SNA process, we kind of built these kind of uh, spring graphs um, of the different questions we asked. So this one was about kind of strategic engagement, professional engagement within a network. And it's kind of a fairly standard looking graph in the sense that you get an idea of the kind of key organizational members and they tend to be the central ones that have uh, multiple connections and those lines tend to be kind of heavily or heavily weighted. And then externally what you have is, is, is multiple partners 
that exist beyond the arts organisation but are actually fundamental to how the arts organisations work. So it was really interesting to sort of explore how connected these arts organisations were to their other stakeholder uh, members. One of the things that you can see uh, as part of this is the degree centrality thing I was talking about. So you can see here who are the kind of key members. So there's about five key people within this particular organisation that were extremely well connected and were managing all the information flows within this organisation. And you can see on the periphery there were many different partners uh, which were very weakly connected, but again, kind of fundamental to how it worked. So when you look at, say, an individual who's uh, central uh, within this kind of strategic question we were exploring, so there's an individual here who is extremely well connected to lots of different members beyond the network and also very strongly connected to the core team within the, within the arts organisation. And what's really interesting about that is that they're, they're communicating really strongly within the team. And when we looked at uh, clique participation index scores, we found that there were multiple cliques within the team. But when you relate that to degree centrality scores, what you find is that teams that have really high clique participation index scores tend to be more creative arts organisations because they have better information flow. Kind of scores seem to correlate. There's been a bit of research that's uh, been produced by Giuseppe Riva and uh, his uh, patriots that kind of looked at that kind of stuff. But the flip side of that is that also we have very weak connections to these external partners and often single nodes, single points of failure where if that member of staff took ill or left the organisation, suddenly all of those other connections would leave that organisation. So it became really, really useful to feed that back to the arts organisation so they could see that vulnerability and could take steps to think about how they would kind of try and mitigate against that in some kind of a way. It's also worth uh, noting that actually this kind of, this weak connection, although it looks like a weakness, sometimes it's actually a strength because these, these uh, connections change in strength over time depending on the questions you ask and where people are in different points of the cycle in terms of the, the organisational activity that they're involved in. So it's quite interesting how you, the strengths and weaknesses, it allows a kind of certain flexibility within arts organisations which makes them kind of unique um, organizations. So when we started looking at clustering of stuff, we kind of were able to look at uh, different kinds of sectors. So we were able to visualize where there were certain strengths and weaknesses. So this organization uh, had some particular connections within uh, creative industries, uh, cultural arts, uh, publishing, uh, media. So you can see some strong connections across those things, but also connections to so other things, and also opportunities that are kind of maybe missed, so they've identified nodes perhaps that they had worked with in the past, but at this point in time they weren't connected to. So there's opportunities for them to kind of revisit those projects or different partners that they had worked with in time and they've maybe kind of forgotten about that. Being able to visualize that, I think was quite useful for the arts organizations to reflect on. Oh yeah, if I haven't, I haven't spoken to that person in a while, you know, that's kind of an interesting thing. Maybe they've got another partner there, we can get engaged in projects and so on. So sector is quite interesting, kind of looking at that kind of stuff. And then we also looked at the way in which uh, networks work across, across different cities. Um, so this organization is kind of basically um, based in Manchester um, and they had connections uh, to the likes of Washington DC. Um, can't, can't actually read this week. All of the information um, was uh, we decided not to anonymize any of this. We just decided to make it really, really small so you can't read it. <laughs> um, so uh, it's kind of hard to follow. Um, but there's a whole number of different cities and, and, and you can see the different arts organizations. Some of them were really engaged across a, a huge kind of uh, range of different kinds of cities and some of them were much more focused in, the, in their local uh, region as well. And this played out in relation to uh, countries as well. So. For example, here, again, most of what's happening here is happening in the UK, but some of it is happening. Some of it's happening in uh, Holland and the um, difference between England and Scotland is noted there. Um, America, uh, yeah, USA is there. So various other different countries. So you can kind of see arts organizations have got this way to kind of show the value of their, the, the, the breadth of their connections within different sectors, different cities and different locations in different countries and so on as well, which becomes 
a useful value proposition, really. So the kind of things that uh, kind of came out of that process was that we knew that um, we knew that uh, connecting this to different sectors was going to be important. Connecting this to different cities and countries was important. Connecting this to people with different skill sets and positions was going to be important as well. And uh, how we kind of were able to show the way that different ideas were generated and how different partners were involved in that generation process was quite an important thing to look at as well. And that comes out of some of the different graphs. I haven't shown all of that there because there's, there's just so much in terms of the graphs that we, we developed for the different questions that we looked at. So then we tried to then turn that into uh, an API. So we developed this Arts API with our technology partners who took all of that learning from the SNA process and, and built uh, a linked data framework which was going to work on a whole range of different kinds of data that um, the arts organisations were really excited to work with right at the start of the, of the project. But then about six to eight months into it, they all decided that no, they weren't going to do that because the, it was too sensitive or the data was really difficult for them to actually let go of. Or it was, there was all sorts of issues that started to kind of come out of that process where they kind of, they, they were less comfortable with actually letting us work with the data. So we ended up working with uh, a pilot study where we worked with the email, 12 months worth of email data from one of the organizations and we built maps uh, an arts API around that and kind of built a network out of that. And we had to develop a process in order to kind of get that information into the system. Uh, and this is kind of this, the, the processes, the steps we kind of went through. So it was about identifying the staff in your organization, uh, downloading a copy of the data agreement so that you could hand over the data to us and, and, and the, we would process it in, in the way that was agreed. Um, from us of what email client it was going to be, Download 12 months of email data, make sure it was in an inbox file, put that, upload that to Dropbox, log into the Arts API system, authorize the Dropbox, upload, the data would get uploaded. And then we had to move into this tagging phase. Now, the tagging phase, unfortunately, was something that really became a bit of a, a deal breaker because it became an extremely laborious process to grow through. What we were aiming for was to get beyond that process where we could actually automate some of that stuff. But because the arts organisations weren't happy to actually give us all the access to all the kind of um, data streams that, that they, we thought might work. Things like kind of LinkedIn accounts and Twitter accounts and so on and so forth. We weren't actually able to automate that process. Um, and we had put in place the, the opportunity for um, looking at email data, but also actually kind of data mining the content of those emails as well. And again, that was something that uh, arts organisations were really sensitive about. But we built um, a kind of an ontology of the sort of things that we wanted to look for in that process. And we kind of vetted that with them and they seemed to be fairly okay with that process. But then the development uh, process took so long that we basically hit our deadline and we couldn't complete that part of the project. So it, got, it went beyond us basically. So we, we basically attempted to kind of fit a three-year project into 12 months and it, and it didn't quite, we didn't quite pull it off although we managed to get some really interesting research out of the process. So these are just some of the screenshots from the tagging process and you can see kind of lists and drop-down menus and importing email and tagging with cities and countries and so on. So it just it became a really laborious process which wasn't kind of well uh, adopted at the end of the day. Uh, and this is the kind of visual representation, this is a, a, an unfiltered representation of the kind of information that comes out of 12 months uh, twelve months worth of, of email data. Um, that's big data, that's just too difficult to kind of really understand. But had we got to the point we were able to filter it in the way we wanted to, we would have been able to kind of look at that from multiple different perspectives and so on uh, to help visualise the stuff. And it would have been a much quicker uh, process as well. So in conclusion, uh, our aim was to build a test to build and test a, a proof of concept data-driven network modeling tool, uh, which we kind of did. Um, the complexity of working with email data and building a shared ontology, that was, it was difficult. Uh, we managed to solve some really complex problems, but I think we kind of got a bit stymied by some others. Uh, and then the limitations in terms of sensitivity around data sharing and so on, um, that was problematic and kind of put us back a fair bit trying to kind of work that stuff out. Uh, on the plus side, we did some really successful analysis of the way in which arts organisations create and sustain their creative ecosystems, and we fed that back to the individual arts organisations, so they went away with reports that helped them really think about their 
their strategies and their structures and so on. Uh, also the ability to identify vulnerabilities in within, within their networks and how to be more robust. Uh, and to help them think about different strategies for funding and future development through uh, the value that they've already got in their, in their organisations. Uh, so that's uh, essentially where we got to. So it was myself, Jeff and Malcolm and Fraser Bruce uh, from the University of Dundee. Thank you very much. Thank you.